807 First Street Southeast. Peace is every city's business. A peaceful education setting is a human right 
all students in this district and every district in this country deserve, regardless of learning disabilities. Mayor, you more than anyone, given your anxiety disorder, should realize how difficult it will be for special needs students to get a fair shake at, at quality education and opportunities downwind of a noisy, odorous pet foods plant. You as a Sourcewell board member, a past District 482 school board member, and the president of Little Falls EDA board were instrumental in facilitating this ill-gotten pairing of school building across the street from an agricultural manufacturing plant. I strongly oppose, again, this may be legal as I'll get out, but it's certainly not ethical. In 2016, some residents of Lakewood, Washington, criticized the city for choosing private development over schools. They originally allowed Westbrook Middle School in an industrial zone, then later said the school would have to go. Residents felt it was a subplot to a greater objective by the city to increase its tax revenue through an industrial complex. Will mid-state education find itself in the same pickle eventually? Teresa Sporset was right when she said, Little Falls' greatest challenge is heart failure. There's a reason mediocrity is being promoted. My priority is to find my way beyond the machinery that keeps Little Falls stupid. What makes any city attractive is its humanity. Whom do you wish to attract to our town? More wolves to exploit the poor? The Barrett Pet Foods family operate, opposed a much needed halfway house called You Are Not Alone for Rule 25 Patients, proposed one mile from their facility because they felt it would put their plant and employees at risk. Barrett's appear to value only their families. Are their own employees and truck drivers that enter their facilities drug tested and background checked? Doubtful. City officials can sometimes be held personally accountable for failing to act or for taking unauthorized actions on the part of the city. The design of TIF in many states makes it vulnerable to exploitation by cities, which can obtain revenues that otherwise would have gone to overlying governments, especially school districts. 96% of companies fail within 10 years, taking jobs and capital down with them like a sinking ship. By hook or by crook, Mayor Zilka and his cronies appear hell-bent on passing this unsavory combo. Your time is up, Robin. Would someone else like to speak? Go ahead, Laura. Laura Wright, 702 12th Street, Northeast Little Falls. On ordinance number 19, 7 series, I ask that you won't know. It seems that laundering of land is taking place. Selling from one entity to the next to the next, it makes this appear somewhat legal. The independent school district recently sold 52 acres to the city of Little Falls for a dollar. The city tonight plans to sell the same 52-acre land parcel uh, to the Pet Foods factory for a dollar. However, it should be noted uh, that this first transaction in the laundering plan was not done in accordance with Minnesota state statute. According to Minnesota state law, statute 92.03, minimum price of lands, subdivision one, school lands. The price of school lands must uh, be at least $5 an acre. I would ask, uh, since the school land was sold for a dollar for all 52 acres, uh, how is this legal? Why do we have city code local law if we don't intend to follow it? So under chapter 11, it talks about the creation of excessive noise on a street or private property adjacent to any school, institution of learning, church, court, hospital, or in the same area, um, which reasonably interferes with the use thereof. Again, that's from our own code. Mid-state provides services to the deaf, hard of hearing, autistic, many others. Do you think it's really the best idea to put the most vulnerable children um, next to a heavy industrial site? Where is the environmental impact study? Have we thought through the issue of premise liability? Lawsuits that result due to keep, uh, failing to keep students safe while on school property. How do you know these children will be safe without having any data? Uh, how about the nearby historical area? Would that be damaged or the Anderson Lake home addition? Would that be impacted or neighboring businesses? You don't know because you don't have any data. 
and so how can you make an educated decision about this? Did you forget about Penn State and the children oh, playing outside on the playground equipment, getting on and off the school buses, <laughs> having any, and a loud noise of smelling the place? What about the kids? What if a child wanders off and is hit by a heavily loaded truck? How do you protect the children from predators? Are, are you going to put up fences out there? What's the reason uh, why the, the children have to be in these vulnerable situations in these high risk areas? Wages. We were told um, that they were going to pay around $15 an hour. It's now down to about $13 an hour. What about our workers? That was part of our original negotiations. Part of the incentives, uh, about a $3 million sweetheart deal, uh, I received a phone call about what if this company sells out to a Japanese conglomerate, a blue chip company. Uh, there apparently has been some conversations going on. According to the state, if we give away this land, we put all these incentives forward, our community is, is out. Your time is up, Laura. Carol Anderson, um, Community Development in Morrison County, 316 East Broadway. Um, I want to talk about some of the inaccuracies uh, here this evening. Let's do a history of the land. Um, this is farmland, um, which was purchased back in the 80s by a local group of investors uh, for a racetrack. Uh, Bill Blaine and Jerry Wood were the leaders of the group in the early 80s. They financed it um, with Shen Adams at then American National Bank. And when the racetrack didn't happen, the bank got the land back. So the bank approached the school district and asked them, would you like to buy it for a possible future site for the school? It had about 90 acres. The school bought it. And then the citizens um, of the district said, no, we don't want to um, invest the funds in a large um, new school system out there. Um, so they, and the, the residents said, why don't you uh, fix the buildings that you have? Uh, the school district did that, and they decided they wanted to sell the land and bring some investment into the community, but the land didn't have any sewer and water. So the city came in and talked with the school district, and they agreed to run sewer and water right through the middle of the property. Um, and so there are assessments with the property. The school district decided to have um, the water and sewer again go through the mill. Even if the school district, uh, why would they invest millions in a new facility when they already put millions into remodeling the schools that they have? Uh, the school district sold the land to Mid-State Ed District for $9,500 an acre, approximately $100,000. The school district is selling the land to Barrett's through the city for, for the same amount of money, $494,000, which includes the assessment. The school district toured the facility north of Piers and agreed, and agreed to help with the project by taking payments over nine years through the TIF district. A TIF district is not tax free, it is just the opposite. The Barretts have to pay their property taxes just like any other business in town. The city will take that uh, money from the ta uh, property taxes and they will then pay the school district over time for the land. This land is zoned industrial and the state knew that when they built. The Barretts have every right to be there. They are an industrial company. The question is why was Mid-State allowed to build in an industrial park? If they knew it was an industrial park, they sure certainly should have known that industry would be coming. Back in the corner, please. Hello, I'm Jason Johnson. Uh, my home address is 952 Mayo Road, Pequot Lakes, Minnesota. I am one of the owners of ABS Supply in the industrial park there. Um, on 17th. I just wanted to say that I personally have had a chance to thoroughly uh, thoroughly go through and see the Barrett operation and I can say I am impressed and this comes from someone that over the last 25 years makes their living out of working in manufacturing, fabricating and industrial plants across the Midwest. I extensively traveled through eight states I get the luxury of seeing how it's made every day for my job, and I love it. 
And I can say that when I left that plant, I was more impressed than I have been in virtually any other one I've ever been into of any sort. It is organized, well run, and I see zero reasons, any of which have been listed here, why they should not be my neighbor. And I say that as someone who is a business owner and a landowner right next to them. They do a fantastic job with their entire operation. It was neat, clean, organized, and it was very, very well run. So as far as a neighbor, I say not only should they be there, I would welcome them to come there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brian? Brian Hill, 17797 Gale Drive. I am co-president of the Little Falls Business Association. Kelly Laubert is the co-president with me. First of all, I want to thank the city council and the mayor for putting up with a lot of the crap you put up with. A lot of times you get luck thrown at you. Two minutes later you get praise, often on the same subject. Honestly, you probably deserve a little of both of it. All of us in the room deserve a little of both of it. Everybody's got good points. The economic thing is a big thing. I drove into the Barrett facility yesterday at 5 p.m. Probably from here, the flags away. Yeah, I can smell something like a decay of some kind. That's not a big deal from this distance. What was shocking to me was the one acre of about 500 seagulls eating something. I don't know what it was. I've never seen 500 seagulls at one time before in my life. It was amazing. Are they dumping something there? You know, what's going on with it? Um, are they going to do that here? If it's going to be run the same, I would assume that it would be done the same. And I grew up on a lake. I've been to Duluth many times. If you've been at Duluth, down by the waterfront, you've seen the seagulls. Hundreds of them? Probably. 500? No. Let's play a little virtual game. You're recruiting me to bring my factory to Little Falls. We're going to drive up the little hill from Walmart going north. You have two choices because we have limited time. There's an imaginary wall on each side of the road with a big curtain. You can, op you can open up one curtain. The one on the left or the one on the right to try to impress me to try to impress me as to what type of uh, area that I'm going to build in. You have airborne, world class, the school, world class, nothing wrong with the other buildings or businesses. There is a big clash there. That's the dilemma. And it is hard to mix them together. And sometimes it's who came. Sometimes it is it's who came first that wins. Thank you. Someone else like to speak? Your name and address, please, by the microphone. Marianne Keatley from Cold Spring, Minnesota. And I'm in transition, looking for a town about this size to move to. I looked at some beautiful little homes behind all these, they were there first. And I don't think I want to move to an area that has a stench coming out, out of a factory, or I don't even want to look at that in the resident, from the residential homes. They're just beautiful, and I'd love to be part of this community, but not if it's going to be an area like that. Thank you. Ma'am, could I have your name again and address? Marianne Keekley. Can you spell so, your last name? I'm sorry. K U E C H L A. 607 2nd Street South in Cold Spring, Minnesota. Thank you. Yep. Would someone else like to speak? Uh, Tom Barrett, Barrett Pet Food, address 2227 Shady Nook Road, Brainerd, Minnesota. I want to thank the, uh, the council and the mayor for having us here. Obviously, um, it's been a, a long road here towards um, joining the Little Falls community, which uh, I think sort of kicked off last year, uh, about this time, a little bit earlier. And I do appreciate all the efforts with, with everybody in the community. We've felt very welcomed up to this point. Um, 
I just wanted to touch on a couple of points, a couple of facts, um, and, and don't really want to, to sling any mud. Um, but one thing that, that Sarah and I um, at Bear Pet Food take pride in is our employees and our workforce. We take care of them. Um, our, our average wage, wage is north of $20 an hour. The average starting wage in this factory would be $13.75. That is not every starting wage. That is the very bare minimum starting wage is $13.75. On top of that, we offer to every single employee, every single full-time employee, which is 90% of our workforce, 100% paid health care. That means no premium out of their pocket every single month and not a dollar out of their pocket. That's a $500 deductible health care plan, and I would love to find another private employer who can match that. Uh, we intend to keep it that way because we care about our, about our employees. A couple of other things that we do um, within our company just to get it to know us. Uh, we, we have a full 3% match on retirement uh, after the first year. Within the first year, there's a week of paid vacation. At one year, it's two weeks paid vacation. We have a maternity and a paternity leave paid. We have a boot program, every one of our employees and our staff, we bring verbals over, the boot mobile, we buy every single person every year a new pair of boots. Uh, we do these things because we care about our employees. If we were just trying to pad our pockets, we would not be doing this. Uh, we take great pride in it. We take great pride in our plant and our facility. Uh, as far as uh, One minute left. moving to Little Falls, we want to be a good neighbor. We're, we're glad to share the plans with anybody who wants to see them to show how we're going to Reduce noise, there will be no noise at this facility outside of the light hum, possibly. The fans will be inside instead of outside like our current plant. We would be investing in new equipment so there will be less smell. We'll put stacks on the building so it will carry the smell away. We will make every effort possible to keep the citizens of Little Falls happy because we're going to be here to stay. Uh, we are not going to sell our company. We're a local family owned business, 100%, and we're in it for the long haul. And I thank everybody. Thank you. Someone else like to speak? I'm Michael Manlick. I live two miles from Barrett's, 16420 County Road 139. Council. I have worked for him for four years. Best people I've ever worked for. And when I get people talking bad about that place, it really irritates me. You've got a thorn in your side in this town. I don't know why she keeps bringing up such problems for this city council, but they do nothing wrong. I had cancer. They stood behind me like you wouldn't believe, these people. So all these people badmouth this company, I'd like to tell them what I think of them, you know, outside of this place. But I'll keep my peace. So just so you know, these people are very good. They'll do this town, especially What's happening to this town? Losing both boat works, Dalco, the ethanol plant. You guys need some jobs. That's what. I, that's the way I feel. This town needs some help. I grew up here. I graduated in 1981. A couple of people here I see went to school with them. And that's just my thoughts on this whole deal. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Someone else like to speak? I'd like to speak. Go up to the microphone. We need your name and address for the record, please. Sure, sure. My name is Wendy Mulhauser. Last name is M-U-H-L-H-A-U-S-E-R. 1130 Riverside, sorry, Siri did not know how to get here. 1130 Riverside Drive, Southeast, St. Cloud, and then five, we'll see, 55304, I believe. So, um, do you know I come, I am a children's author, and I'm an over 20 year educator. There are so many labels that all of us can have, and one of the labels that I don't so often share with people is that I'm a woman with disability. I have had six brain injuries, and yet I have a 4.0 in my doctoral program, and I'm a published author, and somehow my book is five star rated and has a Globally Mindful Award. I don't say that to brag, but the reason that I came is that I'm deeply concerned about the special needs children who may be in an area that is terribly, terribly noisy and that is not 
helpful to a person with brain injury or other disabilities. I will tell you that there's no way that I would be at the level that I am today if I couldn't control my environment, if I couldn't have a quiet, peaceful, quiet place to, to come back from the brain injuries that I had. I had no TV in my home. I had an amazing young son who was raised with a woman with disability, so he understood that he just needed to be quiet. And I'm so grateful for, for all of that. But the reason I'm speaking is that I feel so uh, troubled to hear that children with special needs will be exposed to the noise and the chaos that is going to befell them when they're outside of their learning institution. Again, I am an over 20 year educator. My work is about preserving childhood, preserving childhood for all children, not only typical needs children, but for special needs children as well. Yeah, one minute left. Okay, the other piece that I wanted to talk about, my dissertation chair, his name's Four Arrows. I was born in North Dakota. I believe strongly in caring about the voiceless and too often, Native Americans are voiceless. There is an amazing man who is buried, Chief Hole in the Day. And this is an area where, where we need to be respecting and honoring this man who no longer exists. So that's, that's an important piece of it. Uh, I'm juggling a lot of things right now. It felt so important for me to be here to support a friend of mine who lives here because I want to make sure that we are honoring our children who also are voiceless. Thank you very much. Would someone else like to speak? Sarah? Sarah O'Cry, 611 Third Street, Southeast, Little Falls. I'm just coming here as a special needs mother to give my viewpoint. Um, I think some people here don't give special needs individuals enough credit. Um, we should give them the opportunity to learn and grow like everybody else. Um, don't try to put them in a bubble. Let them experience the world just as everybody else gets to. So I wanted to address a couple things. Um, I'm concerned about smell. Um, so let me back up. I have three kiddos. Two of them are blessed being um, autistic and nonverbal. Um, sensory is a big part of our lives. Um, every sense, um, touch, smell, sight, everything. So um, the concern about smells, um, I, I live that every day. Um, sometimes good smells can be a problem because if they walk past somebody that has a pleasant, pleasant smell in the store, they might want to chase after that person and start smelling them. Kind of an awkward situation for mom, right? <coughs> um, bad smells, I like to think I'm a good cook don't. Um, so when I, when I start sending up some smoke signals in my house and it's pretty stenchy for like three hours, those are opportunities for my children to learn and grow. Um, they would like me to have more opportunities to learn to cook. Well, <laughs> we'll figure that out. Um, also a concern about noise. Um, noise is a big thing for my kiddos too. Um, and the, the movement of vehicles and the sound of vehicles has always been a struggle for them. And that is why we make sure that we give our kiddos the opportunity to get out in the community and hear those sounds and see those vehicles. We walk miles and miles a day so that they can learn and grow how to adapt to that environment and how to settle themselves outside of that environment. Um, also, my kiddos elope. They run from safety areas. Um, they currently have been attending Limburg Elementary School. They have one-on-one -on -one pair of help in every special needs kiddo. Um, gets the help that they need, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or not. Um, and when they're outside, they are a safety risk. Yeah, but then again, when they are inside, they are a safety risk. Um, I know the safety risk my kiddos have um, living right there on the main drag. Um, I trust in their one-on-one -on -one support as they learn and grow to um, be able to be safe in that environment. So um, I know every special needs individual is different but I don't think that trying to put special needs kiddos in a bubble, away from the world, away from allowing them to grow and thrive in the community is the right thing to do. So I think both Barrett and Mistake can coexist just fine. Thank you, Sarah. Sorry. Our field, and we live, now live at 506 12th Street Northeast, but we have an empty building sitting downtown at 115 First Street Northeast. 
and I am definitely for the Barrett Food Products to come to town because I think we need to economically keep this community going. And it sounds like the location that they want is the right location because they um, are going into an industrial park, not into a school area. Thank you, Barb. Go ahead. Sarah Barrett Reiner, Barrett Pet Food, 1348 State Highway 25, Brainerd, Minnesota, 56401. Uh, thank you, Council, for listening to us tonight. Um, what Sarah just said was really important. So I'm here to tell you that we are community oriented. So we donate to our local schools, we donate to our local 4 H club, we donate to our local FFA club. We donated money to the Crowing County canine unit to buy a bulletproof vest for their dog. Um, we are very active in our community. We believe in community. And that is why we've chose Little Falls. We had plenty of other communities who offered us the same or better benefits, but we felt that Little Falls was where we belong. We grew up around here, our grandma used to bring us to town to go to the laundry mat when we were kids, and it's always felt a little bit like home. So that's why we wanted to be here. I want to tell you that we have invited Mid-State out to our facility. They postponed. We invited each and every council to visit our facility, as well as business leaders, local business leaders because we are an open book. You are welcome to visit our facility. I want you to feel comfortable in your decision because we want to be comfortable here. So I also want to let you know that you cannot always choose your neighbors, but if you can pick something about your neighbor, pick the neighbor who's willing to work with you. We are willing to work with Mid-State. We are willing to ease their mind. They just have not come forward to allow us to do that. You have one minute left, sir. We are willing to spend extra money and effort to ease their mind. Although I will tell you that each person that has visited our facility this week has not complained of smell or loud noises. They were satisfied after they left. They saw that it is a well-run, clean facility, and we do our best to keep it that way because we are proud of what we do. Thank you. Mary Taylor, 23124 South Platte River Drive, Pierce. I have been with Barrett's for almost 10 years. I work in the meat room. The smell is not all that bad. I'm in there every day. Um, we drive by. I don't smell. I ran the Piers Youth Bowling and went straight from work to the bowling alley. The kids have never complained and said that I smell bad because I didn't have time to go home and shower. Um, they give us uniforms to wear. We don't have to pay to have them washed. They cover it. Like they said, we get our boots, our insurance. So I think it's a wonderful place to bring into Little Falls. And it'll be closer for a room for me. So. Excuse me, could I get your first name again, please? Mary Taylor. Thank you. Someone else like to speak? Hi, I'm Bob Reinitz, member of the EDA. Um, Long-time businessman. Um, I don't understand why we can possibly object to this company coming to town. We've lost enough businesses. We've managed to get lucky and pull in a substantial employer that's growing incredibly fast. How are we going to turn? Why would we ever turn this down? This makes no sense to me at all. I don't understand the objections. A lot of it is totally unfounded. Unfounded. Um, I think we're very blessed to have this opportunity. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Hello, I'm 
I'm Tom Smoody. Um, I'm over in Piers at uh, 400 Centennial Drive. Um, we recently purchased uh, Redwood Industries for building a new crush plant for oil. Um, we've been working with Barrett since 2010, um, starting out with two and a half gallons all the way up to tanker loads now. So um, it's been a huge success for us and we've grown from zero employees to over 20 and it's going to keep on growing especially with this year expansion so um, I just wanted to come and say that I mean just not the jobs that they're going to create they're creating so many more 10 miles away also so um, and I, I drive truck I unload our own oil up at the plant I don't notice any noise I mean it's quiet you can walk around there and I guess if, if anybody I, I would say go up there and see it yourself like Sarah said because it's a very well-run business, so I think that's it. Thank you. Susie? My name is Susie Persapio, address 10139 Hilton Road, Little Falls. I also own the shops in Little Falls downtown. Um, some of you may know, previously I served on the school board and at that time I also served as liaison to the Mid-State District. So special needs, uh, education and kids were near and dear to my heart. So seeing this come before the council, I belatedly contacted, reached out to Sarah Barrett, who very uh, graciously let me walk through the, the facility today. Um, I was ready the minute I opened that door to see if I smelled anything, and I didn't smell anything. The facility was exceptionally clean. It was a pleasure to walk through a manufacturing plant like that. I think that for an educational district within a uh, industrial park, you could not ask for a better neighbor than Barrett. And for our community, I don't think we could ask for a better employer. Mike Wilson, 311 First Avenue, Southeast Piers. Um, I've lived in the Piers area for 42 years, and I've known Sarah's dad and stuff, and when they started business, and they've done a wonderful job. Um, the only thing I have against them is they're not building in piers. <laughs> but this is a good alternative. You know, their business has grown. It's helped our uh, communities over there. They're out in the middle between Brainerd and St. Cloud, and they have all these employees. What better thing could you have to bring people out into the community? Um, I've dealt with farmers for 42 years, and farmers have been going broke pretty fast with milking cows. And these people are going to open up a new thing for them about different types of crops and premium prices that they have to pay to get different crops here that they use every day. And I think that will open up things to our farmers to give them an opportunity to be able to stay in business. So, thank you. Gerald, 11583 Baby Road in Little Falls. Um, I also went over to the uh, plant to take a look at it, and I will tell you I had, I had no concept what I expected to see, but I can tell you when I went in there, I also was very impressed, one, with the openness of answering any questions that I asked them, two, the cleanliness of the place. I'm not sure what I expected, it's a manufacturing place. I mean, I worked at Green Giant growing up. I, you know, I was, this is a lot cleaner than Green Giant growing up. Um, it was clean all over, and I shouldn't say a lot cleaner. It was clean. You were, you know, the scuff things over your shoes. You walked around. <coughs> I didn't notice a smell of, yeah, we got outside of the car, and you might smell something that smells like you're in the row of dog food sales at a store. That's it. 
That's it. It's not a smell of decay. It's not a smell inside. It's not... I, I was amazed at the, the process. The whole process was clean. The whole plot process is laid out for everyone to see. And they're paying good wages. They work with employees in high school, right out of high school. They keep them there. They grow them. They train them. They move them up in their line so that these people who are working there are getting good long-term employment and long-term jobs. They get benefits. I heard their benefits today. Well, that's great benefits. In a town our size, those are great benefits. So I would strongly support them coming into town. And I'm sorry for Piers for not getting the second plant. <laughs> Anyone else like to speak? Thank you. We'll move on to our bill.